Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this lesson, we'll talk about the stack panel layout control, which allows you to arrange your controls in a flow by default from top to bottom, but then we can also change an orientation property to flow from left to right in a, in a uh, horizontal fashion. We can even change uh, the flow to go from left to right to right to left if we want to change that property on a given stack panel. And a stack panel is pretty simple. Again, it's just uh, a panel, um, like a div tag almost if you're familiar with HTML development. Uh, and inside of that, whatever you put will be stacked on top of each other or side by side. And so in this case, you can see that I have a very simple uh, application here called simple stack panel that you could load up and follow along. Notice that I used the little plus and minus symbols here in the leftmost column to uh, to roll up my code so we can see the overall structure of this uh, application. And you might be wondering, well, why do we have stack panels inside of stack panels? Why can't we just do something like this? Well, you'll see that we get the blue squiggly line. If I hover over the second stack panel, we get the familiar exception that the property content is set more than once. So a page only has a content property. It does not have a children, uh, a children property collection. So that's why we need, and I'm just gonna con control Z, control Z. That's why we need an outermost stack panel. And then inside of that, we can put as many stack panels or other controls that we wanna place. So inside of this first stack panel, notice that I have three text blocks that are stacked on top of each other. Notice they take up the full width because we haven't specified a width. Uh, and by default, they're arranged in a vertical fashion. The, the item at the top will be the first item stacked. The item at the bottom will be the last item stacked. Okay, so it's done in order. Furthermore, uh, underneath that third text block, we have a second stack panel. We've set its orientation horizontal. So it's going to represent, I guess you could call it, another row that's stacked beneath. And then inside of that, we're stacking things in a uh, horizontal fashion. So the leftmost stacked item is a text block that has the word fourth in it. The next item that's stacked next to it is a text block text box and then the next item is a button that with the uh, with the content sixth in it and you can see the effect that we get so we can we can almost achieve anything that we want to if we're using the stack panel wisely uh, and I as I'll say at the very end of this lesson I tend to use the stack panel actually more than I use the grid uh, I think that it's it allows me to get the design that I want and it gives me the the flow that I want um, regardless of of the size of the device that we're actually running on. Uh, you can also see that I've got a stack panel defined beneath it with a simple rectangle. And the only thing I wanted to illustrate here was that we can set the height of the stack panel, and yet items inside of the stack panel can have their own height independent of the parent. If we were to remove this height, notice what happens. The uh, Essentially, the, the height of the stack panel is set to auto. Uh, if we were to try to set it to star, it wouldn't work, uh, but we can set it to a numerical pixel, or we can just leave it at default, which is auto. Let me go ahead and control Z on that, and then save this. And then let's open up a more intricate example here that I've created called complex stack panel. And as you can see, uh, I have changed from the default viewer, that would be a five inch phone to a tablet, just to accommodate the larger width of this of this uh, of this design that I created, and notice also, uh, and take a few moments here to just to kind of line up what you see inside of here with the code, because we have stack panels inside of stack panels inside of stack panels, and it can get confusing. Uh, however, hopefully, between the color descriptions, holding your mouse cursor on it, and seeing the little boundary box that's selected, you can kind of make heads or tails of how this works. But the topmost stack panel uh, defines, I guess you could call a row, uh, and then also the height of this stack panel, this topmost stack panel, is actually dictated by the items that are inside of it, specifically this rectangle with the fill of bisque, its height is set to 200, so that sets the, the height uh, for the entire stack panel, since nothing else inside of it has a larger uh, uh, height. Also, you'll notice that I set the vertical alignment of this topmost stack panel. And the reason I did that, because if you change that, uh, it will now get moved to the middle of this grid cell. And that's just the difference in how 
uh, grids work and stack panels work and we'll see an issue with this at the very end of this lesson uh, so let me just go ahead and hit control Z and that's what will bring that stack panel up to the top all right since we're stacking horizontally here uh, horizontally I've added a stack panel that will be positioned right next to the right of that this color rectangle and it will arrange items now in a vertical fashion so inside of that stack panel you can see that I create two other stack panels that are oriented horizontally so the intricacy continues until I have the series of rectangles that uh, resemble something like a Fra uh, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, uh, diagram something that he would have been proud of now as we continue through the series uh, I'll use multiple stack panels to organize the various XAML controls the various XAML elements on screen uh, and I've actually grown to the point where I prefer the flexibility of the stack panel to the rigid nature of the grid and I guess that's just a personal preference but I find that I can usually get what I'm after using stack panels and margins all right now, one of the things that can help you out whenever you're working through an intricate um, amount of XAML and it's difficult to find your way around is this little document outline. If you don't see it uh, by default on this leftmost side here next to the toolbox, you can go to the window. Actually, it's in the view menu. And if you go to other windows, you can see uh, it is here, document outline. All right. So what you can do with this is just kind of make selections inside of uh, this document outline and it shows you kind of the uh, the hierarchy of items we would call this a tree a visual tree uh, and so by selecting each of the items we get the little boundary box selection around it uh, furthermore it's it's kind of convenient whenever you want to make changes in the properties window and it's difficult to find the exact item that you're looking for just by clicking around uh, the other thing that we can do is actually hide items by clicking this left column on the right hand side uh, to remove certain items from from view and then we can also uh, we can also lock items which means that they can't be selected and therefore they can't easily be changed in the properties window I think you can still make changes here though if we really uh, wanted to I haven't really tried that but um, you can see that it adds this lock is locked equals true uh, to the design time experience remember the D uh, prefix here that said that this is ignorable at runtime but it's used by the designer okay so that's the utility of document outline and sometimes I utilize this whenever I want to um, get at or view things uh, isolated from everything else okay so this last example I hope will illustrate a little gotcha and will help us to uh, have a better understanding of the difference between grids and stack panels and uh, something that you need to watch out for and completely understand so let me roll up this code here it's almost identical to the first example that we used in this lesson this time we have a grid that surrounds two stack panels this first topmost stack panel uh, contains three text blocks first second and third and then another embedded stack panel orientation set to horizontal and this time I just have three text blocks uh, that will be um, aligned or rather stacked horizontally uh, so we got fourth fifth and sixth below that we have another stack panel with a rectangle inside of it now in this case you'll look at it and say why is there so much space in between this rectangle and the bottom of the stack panel how what's going on here uh, and you might think well maybe what I could do is set the uh, vertical alignment here equal top and maybe that will help things out and you're like wait I lost my first stack panel you didn't lose it actually it's it's sitting behind the uh, the second stack panel the red the one with the uh, the red rectangle and so there's three things going on here at the same time and this will hopefully help you to understand the difference between grids and stack panels so some controls like image and rectangle controls uh, that are that set themselves inside of a grid cell will be set to 100 width and 100 height by default so that's also true of stack panels when you put a stack panel inside of a grid cell in this case the default grid cell cell zero or row zero column zero uh, then 
the two stack panels are essentially, well, the, the first stack panel uh, has set itself to 100 height and 100 width. Now, the second stack panel has set itself to 200 height. But the second thing that you need to understand that by default, the content in a cell of a grid will be vertically and horizontally centered. So we have the second stack panel and let's remove the vertical alignment. The default here would be center. And so you can see that it's actually sitting the entire stack panels in the center of that cell. And then the third thing you need to understand about grid cells is that you can easily overlap items in a grid cell. So if two or more controls are set to, resi to reside in the exact same grid cell and their horizontal alignment equals top and their vertical alignment equals top, then they will literally sit on top of each other. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, we're actually looking at two stack panels. This first stack panel takes up the entire length and uh, the items inside of it, however, are aligned to the top of that stack panel, but the stack panel itself takes up the whole frame. And then the second stack panel is set into the middle of that cell, but it's only 200 tall. However, whenever we change the vertical alignment and now we move that up to the very top of that single cell inside the grid, that's when we overlapped. So just want you to understand that about grids and about stack panels, that stack panels will never ever allow you to put two of them on top of each other where you can't see the one that's kind of underneath it. Whereas grid cells will absolutely allow you to do that. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways that we could rectify this. The easiest one is just to use stack panels <laughs> uh, as the outermost um, container here in this particular layout. However, you could also create uh, two rows instead of just one row and put this first stack panel in the top row, put the second stack panel in the bottom row, and that'll ensure that they don't overlap. Uh, you could also set the stack panels, uh, you could set its vertical alignment to the top, but then use a margin to push it down. That seems a little more fragile. I don't, I don't know if I like that idea. But there's a, diff a couple of different ways to, to still make this work, even though you're working with a grid, but ideally you'd probably switch to just using stack panels. In fact, like I said a few moments ago, I typically use the stack panel just, just about for everything. I don't use grids as much as I used to, except to give the page an overall structure. And uh, with everything else, I try to use stack panels. And so there is this special technique, however, that I learned uh, when we talk about adaptive triggers and adaptive layout that utilizes grids to adapt from a desktop to a mobile layout that wouldn't be possible with the stack panel. So it still does have its usage. I just prefer uh, in most cases to stick with the stack panel. Okay, so that's all that I have to say about stack panel. Hopefully that was uh, helpful for you to understand it and how it's different from the grid. Uh, the next thing I think we need to do is step back for just a moment and review everything we've talked about up to this point, create a little cheat sheet or start that process that we'll utilize throughout the rest of the series of lessons. And then I wanna give you an assignment and force you to write some code and cement these ideas that we've covered up to now inside your mind. And I'll give you the solution. We'll talk about all that in just a, a video or two from now. From now. So let's, uh, let's start in the very next lesson with some review. See you there. Thanks.